The interim report of the financial system inquiry identifies a number of emerging trends. One of the key emerging trends it identifies is international integration and by this it means the integration of the Australian financial services industry with the rest of the world. And it identifies both good things and bad things with, uh, with international integration, but on the whole concludes that it is a good thing. It increases competition, it increases consumer choice, it increases capital flow into Australia. What it goes on to do, helpfully, is identify a number of impediments to international integration so far. And these impediments are quite significant and have been identified before. And the result of these impediments is that, for example, the funds management industry has got very limited access to overseas capital relative to competitors such as Singapore and Hong Kong. The main impediment that it identified was the, the tax settings in Australia, where, for example, Australian withholding tax applied on foreign inflows into Australian funds are a disincentive to those foreign funds investing in Australian uh, investment vehicles. Unlike Hong Kong and Singapore, where there is no or very little withholding tax. This is not a new issue, one which is identified by the Johnson Report in 2009, uh, but one which I think will need to get a lot of attention. And certainly based on my experience two weeks ago at the Financial System Inquiry, is an area where fund managers in Australia are very keenly looking to see whether there will be any change. A second impediment that the inquiry identified was a lack of coordination between uh, different parts of government. And one of the things that it actually suggested uh, is the creation of a coordination body or a coordination SAR who will really make sure that the different hands of government are working together to achieve the right outcome. One area where the introduction of a coordination body or a coordination SAR would be helpful is, for example, the development of the Asian Region Funds Passport, which is intended to allow Australian funds and the funds of other participating countries seamlessly to market in one another's jurisdictions. While, on the one hand, the legislation for putting that in place and the, the framework for putting that in place is relatively well advanced for a start at the beginning of 2016, on the other hand, the tax settings are such that even if Australian funds are able to market themselves in, for example, Singapore or the Philippines, um, the, 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 there are tax disincentives to those funds in fact successfully marketing in those countries because foreign investors looking for after-tax returns will not see Australian funds as competitive compared to Hong Kong and Singaporean funds, for example. A third impediment that the um, financial system inquiry identified in its interim report is inconsistent regulation where, for example, Australia's regulation makes it difficult for overseas financial services providers to operate in Australia and conversely for Australian financial services providers to operate in other jurisdictions. The Asia Region Funds Passport, which I mentioned, is one way of lowering those barriers. But another way might be, I think, for Australian regulators such as ASIC to work more carefully with regulators in other jurisdictions on mutual recognition uh, arrangements where provided we allow, provided recipro reciprocity is provided by the, two by the two regulators and the regulatory framework is broadly the same, Financial service providers in one country ought to be able to market in another country without needing, for example, to obtain a license in Australia. And if an Australian fund manager then goes into that separate jurisdiction, it should similarly not need a license there. In the context of international integration, I think the critical issues for debate, certainly based on the discussions that I've been having over the last two to three weeks, will be in connection with Australia's tax settings. Uh, and Second, the, um, the need for, for greater coordination uh, within government of how it um, allows Australian financial services providers to export their services overseas. And that involves coordination between different arms of government and their dealings then with foreign regulators and foreign governments to make sure that barriers are lowered as far as possible. With respect to the tax settings, it would be helpful if in its final inquiry, I think the um, in its final report, the, the Murray Inquiry um, made 
stronger recommendations about what it thinks would be the correct tax settings rather than, as was the approach in the interim report, simply to say there are a number of issues and we're going to be referring them for discussion in the tax white paper. I think it would be helpful at this stage for the Murray inquiry, essentially on behalf of the industry, to make a statement about the need for changing those tax settings.